Kia ora, and welcome to another tutorial from daconane.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to continue on with co-spaces, particularly looking at importing 3D objects from places like Tinkercad and using apps like Clone to clone your own objects as a 3D model to put into co-spaces. So there's lots to do. Let's get right into it. Here we are again back in our co-spaces from the last tutorial and you'll remember that we uploaded from um, two different spaces, Mid Journey and from uh, Blockade Labs, two different pictures or 360 degree images of uh, various library settings that we sent. Now this, these, these spaces are just images. Now we want to add content to them to make our VR um, display, our VR adventure, our VR presentation, whatever you are trying to do with this, something that is going to be much more interactive. So we need to upload objects. But let's just tweak what we've got going on here first of all. Over on the left hand side, I've clicked on the scene icon to, or scene tab over here. So I'm just gonna click on it again. We can rename our co-space, so let's call it a library. VR, let's call it Adventure. So this is where we can now name our library, uh, our, our co-space, so we can find it in our library much more easily. And rather than calling things scene one, scene two, let's just call this library one. And obviously I've got two libraries in my, um, let's call this the dining room because it does look like set tables. There we go. And so I've now renamed the um, scenes and we can keep adding to these. A point to note, if you are on the free version, you can only make one 360 degree scene. You can't make additional, you can add, you can add additional scenes, but you can't code them to jump to them. So um, what I can show, all I'm gonna show you in this tutorial will work in just a one scene um, presentation, but you get more out of this if you can um, travel through several different scenes. So again, the pro version of CoSpaces is really worthwhile as an investment. So now what we want to do is we want to start uploading content to this space. So we will do that uh, through here, through this object here. Um, and we've got um, all kinds of uploads that we can do. So I clicked on that middle tab that says upload. We can upload 3D models, we can upload videos, we can upload sound in this tutorial. And the next one, we're gonna be uploading 3D models in this tutorial. And in the next one, we're gonna be uploading sound and then combining them all together. So this is where we're going to upload them. We're gonna click on the upload button. But first of all, we need to create the models that we need to um, import into CoSpaces. So let's have a quick look at that and we're gonna hop across now to Tinkercad. Now I've come across to my Tinkercad account and because we're working in a library I've made a book. It seems, seems sensible to have a book um, in our library that we can use as a trigger to go to some other part of the story, the adventure or presentation that we're creating in CoSpaces. I'm not going to explain how I made this. Um, I will link in the, ch in the video uh, the link to my other co uh, Tinkercad tutorials so if you want to know how to use Tinkercad to model things like this um, I will uh, look at the link in the in the video um, however once you've made a 3d object we want to be able to get this into co-spaces and again I've got another uh, tutorial to show how to do that but this time I want you to um, just quickly look at this we're going to come up to the export function over here um, and if we wanted to export this to be printed as a 3d object we'd use it the STL file but we want to, if we object, um, that export it as an OBJ file, we will keep the color co um, uh, choices we've made here for our model. So we're gonna have the cream for the pages and the red for the binding in this um, option here. So I'm gonna click on export, I'm gonna click on OBJ, and you need to make sure you've named it, so I've called mine book, um, to make it easy to find. So up over here in the top left-hand corner, just call it book. All right, let's, let's just do the process for you. Let's go VR book. There we go. Now I'm going to export this as an OBJ file. There we go, it's exported. It's downloaded as VR book as a zip file. Um, I'm going to um, just click on this. I'm gonna show in my finder and I'm gonna move it to my already created folder. Here it is here. I'm just going to, I've made a, a AR, uh, where is it here? Cospace is here. I'm going to add it here so I can find it, close that. 
And so now we're going to hop back to CoSpaces and um, I'll show you how to upport it, um, import it and then edit it inside a scene. So here we are back in CoSpaces and on the upload um, tab is opened up. Let's just remind ourselves how to get there. So I just close this. If we click it again, it goes small. So down on the bottom tab down here, we so if you want to create more screen space, you just click on the tab that's currently active. So the scene tab here is currently active. I'm gonna click on that and it'll shrink it. Over here, I want to click on upload. So we click on that and it, this tab will expand. Um, limitations again on the free option of the of CoSpaces, you're only allowed a maximum of 10 files to upload. So that's pictures, videos, audio um, and 3D models. So again, you'll need to choose carefully and wisely how you're going to manage your 10 uploads. On my um, pro account, I can upload as much as I like. So I've come on the up upload option here. We need to tell it which one we want to upload. So I need to switch to 3D models. I'm gonna click on upload and I'm gonna to browse to my CoSpaces folder here. VR book zip becomes active. Click on that, click open and that's going to upload and click got it. Now, every time it uploads um, into CoSpaces, it calls the object uploads as Tinker Object. So if you uploaded another one, it would be Tinker Object 2 and so on. I recommend that we actually um, name these as we go along. So we click on the ellipsis here and I'm gonna rename it. I'm, I'm gonna call it my VR book so I know what it is. And so now what we want to do is we want to put this object in here. Let's say we wanted to put that book on this table here. I'm just going to drag the VR object into this space. There it is. And we've now got some functions with this book. So we've now taken our object from Tinkercad and it begins to look like it could be in perspective in this space. We could even try and put it on the shelf. We'll, we'll try that in a moment. But first of all, let's have a look at some of the controls that we've got here. We can use this um, rotation in axis. So we've got the X, Y, and Z. So we can rotate it around the horizontal plane. We can rotate it around uh, the vertical plane like this. And we can rotate it around the other vertical plane like this, X, Y, and Z. So we're just going to slip this back to zero and you can get this um, exactly as you want it to be. You can scale it if you want your book to be bigger um, or smaller and that will that will help with perspective um, and then this object here you can lift it up or down left or right and um, forwards and backwards within the scene and we've got a 360 degree bubble here so we can let's just say if we wanted to put this in the table we want to try and make the book look like it's in scale with the um, table and in, in the right orientation. So we could put it down a bit and think that's looking like it's more on the table. So we just click with each of these tools here. Um, let's just give it a bit of a sort of slightly different orientation, maybe a bit smaller and scale. Yeah, that looks, that looks quite good. So, you know, there is our um, object in our room. Let's just click the close this tab make it so now we've got our room and we can we can now start populating our room with objects that look like they should be belonging on the table here so let's just see if we can't make it to try and shove this book onto this shelf here let's see what we can do with the tools I'm not sure this is going to work but let's just say we wanted to go this way in that orientation then I wanted to go that way in that orientation and let's just spin it around a little bit let's spin it towards me, whoops, wrong way, let's go this way. I have to fiddle around with this, I think. Let's move it this way slightly, that's gonna make it easier for me, I think. Click on the rotate tool here, here we go. So I'm now gonna try and get it looking like it could go in the bookshelf here. And then we can use the lift tool, uh, this one, lift it up and see if we can't get it to look like it's on the bookshelf. Let's put it in here. What does that look like? There we go. So we can, we can begin to make things look like they're on the shelf. Obviously we can scale this a little bit, we'll make it a bit smaller and that will give us a bit more space on this shelf. So we can, you know, we can start to not hide things, but make things a little bit more difficult for people to see. 
And so we can um, look, we can use the orientation tools to um, make things appear um, on uh, objects in our VR room that's been created by our AI, uh, AI text prompt. So now we want to start using this tool, this object in CoSpaces. Once we've put our objects into CoSpaces, um, we, can, we can start to code them. And we'll be using the code function up here in the top right hand corner um, a bit later on. But we need to prepare our objects ready to be coded. So we're going to, we would click on code blocks, and I'll do all this later. But we click on code blocks, and we can start doing some actions. But we, we need to tell code blocks that there are certain objects in each scene that we want to use. So we need to let code blocks know that's the case. So we'll get into that in the next tutorial. But in the first instance, let's just prepare. We know we've got a book on a shelf in here. So if I click on this, we call these tools up. If I double click, we now get this second set of dialog things that we can work with. I think it's a good idea to name it. It's not a tinker object, so let's call it VR book. Let's call it red book in case we've got many more books we want, uh, we want to put in here. Um, we can do all kinds of things. We can change the color if we want to. We can do all kinds of things. We can attach it to things. But at the moment, we just want to name it, and we want to tell code blocks that we uh, that it's going to be included as part of the code. So we click on here, and we use in code blocks like that. And we don't want to show the name. So now that's all we need to do uh, in preparation for getting this object to be able to be used as a trigger inside our um, VR sphere. Each scene. Um, as we start programming it, everything together. Now let's have a look at how we can um, scan objects using uh, Clone, the Clone app, to bring real objects rather than made objects into this space. Now Clone is an Android and uh, um, iOS app that will work um, on your tablet and phones. It allows you to scan an object um, using a background, if you look down here, you can see how the function works and you can create 3D models that you can then export into um, CoSpaces just like I've um, shown you. I'll show you a quick tutorial on how to do that or a quick demonstration rather than tutorial. And then you can decide whether you want to download that app and um, install it for yourselves. With the free version of the Clone app, you have to download this mat and put your 3D object on top of it. When the app becomes active, this hemisphere appears over the top of your object and the um, intent is for you to walk around the object and scan each segment of the hemisphere. You can see here the yellow one is the current one that Clone app is currently um, scanning and you have to turn all the opaque sectors into transparent ones and then your object has been scanned. You can then have, uh, from the free version, uh, you can export your object in varying formats, but it is limited. On the paid for version, you can scan onto a blank background and you have an increased number of um, objects, um, file types that you can export to. So now that you've seen how you can use the clone app to clone your own objects and um, save them, if just like the uh, Tinkercad objects, when you want to export them, if you export them as an OBJ file, you can then import them into CoSpaces. So I've exported one of the ones that uh, the clone app has as a default. It's a pizza, and I'm going to put the pizza onto this table here. So let's go through the process again. I'm going to click on Upload. I'm already in 3D models, but if you come to Images, for example, you remember to switch back to 3D models. I'm going to click on Upload. And this time I've got the clone. It's another zip file, a bit like the um, zip file from Tinkercad. So I'm going to click on clone, zip, click open. It's going to upload it. And this time, because it's a clone model, it doesn't come up with the um, OBJ. It's just model new. I'm going to rename this to, to tell us, remember, remind ourselves what it is. It's a pizza. And I think the pizza needs to go on that table. So let's just drag this into here. Let's put it on here. And our pizza, there it is. So let's just close this. It's way too big, so let's scale it down. Whoops, wrong way. There's our pizza. And I can put it into uh, on the table. Let's put it down here. Drag it across. And scale it again, probably the wrong way. 
there would be good, I think. Um, yep, and down. And I definitely think it needs to be down a bit further. Back there. There, pretty happy with that. So now we've got an object I've created in uh, Tinkercad uh, installed into my 360 degree picture and a clone of a real object that um, has been cloned using the clone app and you'll have to um, spend some time experimenting to work out the optimal way for that to work for you but good lighting um, is always going to help you and so now we've got in our space in this this hellish room with no doors at least I've got something to read and I've got something to eat so it's going to be too bad living in here because I can't get out unless I can break through the windows but we don't know how high up I am so that's basically how um, easy it is to insert objects th that you can now use as triggers. So let's just remind ourselves, let's just click this, click on this, double click on this. We'll call this the pizza, let's name it pizza. So this will now be um, in preparation. Make sure it's in co-blocks, in preparation for when we start coding. Um, and that's how we insert our own 3D models and realistic 3D models into uh, our 360 degree spaces in co-spaces and they are now prepped and ready to be used as triggers um, for, as part of our presentation. In the next tutorial we will look at how we can use AI tools to um, record audio for us and then how we can use that audio as, as a way of telling the story or giving information as part of our presentation. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate your support. Until the next time, Kaki Tiano.